Good morning, everyone. This is Karan sir, your SSC teacher, and today this video is going to be about class seven, guys. And we are going to take this chapter one of civics, democracy, and equality. This chapter ahead today. I hope you all are well and safe with your family. And uh, today we will take this chapter ahead. This will this will be. Your lecture number three of this chapter. Yesterday we discussed about the Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar's uh, ideal society as definition, where he told that he loved equality, fraternity, and liberty. Today we are going to have a take this chapter ahead. You have to go to on go to page number one hundred ninety nine. And you have a look at the case study. Valley Murgan, a Dalit boy and a Ramesh, non-Dalit, are friends from school. Valley Murgan is often invited to study with the Ramesh at his home, as Valley Murgan's home in the Dalit colony does not have electricity, and the street lamp outside his home house is often broken. It means in this chapter we were discussing about the democracy and equality. So this part of the chapter says about how the inequality. It means how we are preaching the equality and how the inequality is prevalent in our society. This is an example of that uh, practice where the upper caste people are not treating the lower caste people well. They are not behaving well with the lower caste people. So this is the story of Valley Murgan. He is a Dalit boy. It means he comes from the SS group of people, and he has a friend from the upper caste. His name is Ramesh. Valley Murgan and Ramesh they are studying together in school, and they are good friends. And often he goes to Ramesh's house to study because in his area, in his village, there the electricity supply is not that good. And the street light is broken more often. That is not in good condition. So he goes to Ramesh's house to study. What happens there? Ramesh or the Valley Murgan. However, Valley Murgan must always sit outside the house on the floor below the elevated platform of the veranda where Ramesh sits. What happens? Ramesh, who is a boy from the upper caste, he sits outside his house on the veranda. Or the elevated platform, we can say it is also known as post post into the uh, that is veranda. It means uh, the elevated uh, platform before entering into the room. That is uh, houses are made. This is a way part of very important part veranda. So Ramesh sits on the veranda. That is also known as veranda in Hindi. English is veranda. Veranda. So. In on veranda, Ramesh sits, and this Velu Murgan he sits on the ground. On the ground, he sits. It means below Velu uh, Ramesh's below uh, below Ramesh's uh, veranda. So this is a very insulting kind of practice going on, where Ramesh sits at the dinner time. Ramesh is called inside to eat with his family on the rare occasion on which Ramesh. Is Insists that the friend should also his friend should also join them for the meals. His parents stipulate that Valley Murgan not eat uh, must eat outside and off the plate that is kept for the Dalit housekeeper. It means Ramesh's father are very stereotype. They have a very cheap mentality. They don't treat people equally. Ramesh loves his friend, but he is like compelled or forced by his parents not to give that much respect to Valley Murgan. Valley Murgan is a boy from the Dalit section group of people. So when Ramesh says his parents that my friend should also come and join with us for the meals. He should. In Mama, shall I invite him also to eat with us? So his Mama says no. 
he is a dalit boy he cannot sit sit with us and he we will not give him the food in the same dish as we are eating he must be served the food outside on a different plate that was kept for a housekeeper well murgan is also asked to wash the plate before and after he eats it means velu murgan the ramesh is saying he is asked to wash the plate plate after and before eating the meal it means he is not treated with a dignified behavior do you think this situation may change due to ramesh's repeated protest it means if ramesh keeps on protesting in front of his parents this situation may change do you think so there are two questions you have to make it you have to put your uh, point of view what you want to say about this question number 1 says what are the facilities that are missing in the valumurgan for valumurgan what kind of facilities are missing for the valumurgan valumurgan is a boy from the dalit section why is valumurgan treated in such manner by ramesh's parents so dear children what do you think suppose that if you are calling your friend in your house he is coming if your parents will just insult him how would you feel and how will your friend feel about this insult just think over it nobody's parent should treat anybody in that manner because all children those who are studying together are equal all parents should look at others children also as their own children because they are friends so if suppose that in class 7 somebody goes to somebody's house and their parents are not treating him well he will never wish to go to his house again so that is a scenario enhancing human dignity what is human dignity it means it is the self esteem of a person it means the self respect of a person if we are insulted at a place we will not have the willingness to go there again somebody insults you you no know, do not like to go there again because your self respect is violated your self esteem is asking you the question why i should go there where nobody respects me where nobody cares for me i will not go there so this happens we have read that caste gender and religion play an important role in determining with whether or not people are treated equally it means we have studied that the caste religion and gender are some of the criteria on the basis of what people are discriminating other people people like velu murgan or a woman or minority represent social groups that are often treated unequally some of the people like velu murgan people from the scst community people from the dalit section of the society people from the poorer section of the society they are not treated equally as i told you those who are rich if they will go to the police station the policeman will give him a chair to sit on but if a other kind of people from the poor section or from a very uh, like uh, you can say backward community goes to the police station that, that same police officer will not talk to him properly he will insult him he will talk to him in a different tone altogether so that is not a good practice which is going on okay now we are so in this chapter whenever they are treated unequally their dignity is violated when somebody is not treating you equally it means your dignity is violated they are not following that respect we must remember that all individuals are equal they are deserve to be given the same respect and dignity 
as the other members of the society and unequal treatment not only violates the dignity but also puts them through the mental agony it means what happens somebody is insulting somebody it, he is not only insulting him but he is giving him a mental pain he is giving him mental agony it means if suppose that there is a marriage ceremony in your society you were also invited to that party that reception party you went there you dressed yourself well you went there and the host those who are giving the party if he ask you why you have come here i didn't invite you just get lost from here you will feel very ashamed of yourself and you will feel very insulted very humiliated and that torture or the mental pressure may cause you some sort of depression you will either you will be very disappointed very mentally very down broken or you will go and protest fight you will have a uh, fight with that man it means if you have good thinking uh, abilities you will think and calm down you will avoid those uh, like uh, fighting or quarrelings but if you will if you are short tempered you will fight with it so the when the dignity is violated the mental uh, torture it feels like a mental torture or a mentally you feel very disturbed now provisions in the indian constitution what are the provisions what are the things that indian constitution has provided us we are going to study about those things in this part of the chapter the indian constitution recognizes the concept of equality what is concept of equality dear children it is article 15 is given in indian constitution where it is clearly written that nobody should be discriminated on the basis of their caste creed color religion language sex or anything so what this article 15 has to say article 15 or article 15 it is given in a little sky color passage you have to look at the book you have to read this very carefully it says article 15 provision of the discrimination on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth suppose that if somebody was born in pakistan but his forefathers came to india he is staying in india you cannot insult him on that ground you cannot call him a pakistani you never because his forefathers his father's father grandfather came to india in before 1997 you can't call him pakistani because just because he was born in pakistan but staying in india he is an indian you have to respect that fact you cannot some say somebody if somebody speaks bengali you cannot uh, insult him by calling bengali on the language on the basis of language on the basis of uh, this caste color if somebody is dark in color somebody is fair in color his body complexions are dark you cannot cannot call him regarding those uh, terms or you cannot pass a comment regarding those things so the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on the grounds of only of religion race caste race caste sex place of birth of any of any of them number 2 says no citizen shall on the ground only of religion says race sex caste place of birth or any of them be subject to any disability liability restriction or condition with regard to you cannot say that say that a marathi some somebody was born in maharashtra he cannot get a job in bihar because he was born in marathi uh, maharashtra you can't call him or you can't 
just disqualify him on the basis of his birth of a place number 2 2a says access to shops public restaurants hotels and places of a public entertainment or use of the well stays being guards bathing guards roads and places of the public restore resort maintained to hold or partly out of the state funds or dedicated to the use of the general public any place which is dedicated to the public cannot be denied the access cannot be denied to the any people on the basis of this as i have mentioned on the basis of those factors it means everybody has to have the equal treatment everybody has to have the accessibility to every places where the public is allowed number 3 nothing in the article shall in this article shall prevent the state from making a special provision for women or children it means if all the state has the right to make a special provision for the children and for the women in it means dear children when you move to the other big cities you will see in the trains in buses there will be special seats for women there will be written lady seat or ladies is written there mahila is written there you can see it means there are some special provision that women should be given some additional preferences in all the fields nothing in the article or the in clause 2 or article 29 shall prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of the any socially and educationally adequate classes of the citizen or the scheduled caste in the city to try it means in this article there is nothing mentioned that the state cannot make a special provision for the scheduled caste in schedule or socially or economically backward classes of the society next the government has tried to enforce equally equality as mentioned in the constitution through various laws as well as the schemes for the disadvantaged sections of the society government is making doing its bit to for the advancement of the uh, like uh, disadvantaged section of the society government initiatives make their meal they of students you can see in the government schools the schools are providing mid day meal it means they give you the food in the afternoon mid day meal is a popular scheme launched by the government of india on 15th august 1995 this scheme was firstly invent, uh, introduced by the government in 1995 way back it was 26 years back the purpose of this scheme is to provide elementary education to all the children and ensure nutrition and the children of the this advances do at the same time it means the government decided that those who are not able to feed their children the government will feed their children as well uh, along with the education we will teach them we will feed them in the school same school this was the program or the plan of the government it was started in tamil nadu tamil nadu was the first state to implement this scheme in india tamil nadu was the first state to implement this in historic order dates dated 28 november 2001 the supreme court directed all the state governments to implement the mid day meal scheme within the next 6 months it means on 28th november 2001 it was 20 years back the supreme court directed all the state it means all 28 states of india to make this scheme compulsory in all the schools of their state in 6 months apart from the some regional variations the achievements of the mid day meal scheme are impressive so we are leaving this chapter here only and we are going to take this chapter ahead in the next lecture lecture and i believe that in the next lecture we will conclude this chapter meanwhile i am giving you the responsibility of making question number a b and c it is your duty to make this in your rough notebook write it down totally in a clean handwriting 
sent it into the group today evening any time between 6 to 7 o'clock thank you have a nice day